What's going on everybody, Gar Hoover here, and today we're gonna to be going through my track, Pursuit, which I made on the PO33. It's a future-based track. A lot of you guys asked for a tutorial for it, so we're gonna walk through how I made the track. Now, unfortunately, I didn't save the samples outside of the PO33, so I have no good way of sharing a sample pack with all of you, but hopefully you can learn some new tips, some new tricks, or just some inspiration on how to make a future bass track on the PO33. Now, that being said, let's get started. All right, so let's begin with some samples. Uh, here's the first one, a pluck. We got another pluck. Weird vocal sound, I made a massive. Here's the bass, it's really fuzzy. We still need to filter it a little bit. Another synth sound and another synth sound. Here are the chords that I use throughout the song. The drum banks on the PO33 do a great job of dividing the chords properly. Here are my drums, kind of going through them a little fast. You can hear that I've layered the hi-hats and cymbals on top of the other drums. And this allows us then to only need one track for all the drums. Now let's take a look at the chords that I use for the chorus. Now each of these chords is only one chord well, but when you play them in a sequence, it sounds really full. And I've got one more of the same drum kit just for the build. So now that we've gone through the samples, I think it's time for us to get started on the track. Let's begin with the intro. Uh, sorry about that. Wrong button. There we go. So nothing too crazy is going on right here. We just have the chords looping around. I'll show you what that looks like right here. All right. And it's pretty much the same rhythm for each of the chord changes. Nothing too special. Let me go to the other pan. Oh, wait. Wrong button again, sorry about that. Okay, so you hear that double hit right there? That is a re-trigger, and how you do that is hold down the note you want, and then you hit the BPM button. You hear how I made it trigger eight times there instead? Let's just do two. There we go, it's back to normal, and that's how I have it varying a little bit. So now let's look at the drums for this as well. So on the offbeat, I have the hi-hat going, except for the last fill. And then also I have this little, I don't even know what type of sound that is, but it's on 5 and 13, kind of playing where the snare would be. And then I have that final little fill at the end that you'll hear. So it's mostly hi-hat sounds. You can hear the open hi-hat, and then it goes into a clap, which I also have re-triggered twice. So let's hear it doing it four times. Yeah, it sounds a little excessive. Let's just go back to two. With the intro figured out, let's now check out the verse. Okay, time for the verse, here we go. You can hear this is a pretty uh, positive feel to it. It has a little more energy than the intro, and then obviously it builds up a little more into the chorus. So let's check out, chords are pretty much the exact same, nothing too special there, but then the melody comes in. It's pretty spacious. Putting reverb on the samples you recorded to the PO33 can help it have a longer tail and sound good. And you can hear that this verse is actually made up of three patterns, not two, but three, so that there's a little bit of alternating going on so that the pattern doesn't get stale as it loops. So now let's take a look at the drums because the drums really carry this section. All right, so you can see where the snare hits are. It's on five and 13 as always. The kicks are pretty similar as well. Nothing too crazy, just the one, seven, and nine. And then I've got this click sound at the first pattern, but you can hear the second time around. It hits on the eight and the 10 as well. And actually, let's look at something real quick. I have a re-trigger on that one block sound, a little rim shot, and I have it triggering twice on eight. Add a little variation and some fun to it. But now let's take a look at the hi-hats because the hi-hats have a lot going on with them. You can see how many hi-hats I use. I fill in any gap with a hi-hat usually just to continue to provide some drive and motion to the song. And I, of course I also put a lot of triggers. This first one has two triggers on three and then the, on four we have four triggers. 
can hear how the hi-hats lead into the snare hits. It sounds really awesome. And they also drive so well. Let's check out that bass line. The bass is really simple as well. It just follows the kick. You can hear how it really doesn't sound too great right now, but if we adjust the filter, just roll off some of that high end where all that buzz is, it's a much purer tone. Sounds great, especially with the kick. It helps really drive that low end. And now let's check out the build. So for the build, it takes up four patterns total. So you can hear that there's a lot going on here in this build and everything should be morphing or changing along the way before you get to the drop. Nothing should be static. So let's check out the plus. You can see how I just have it triggered every single step. And then I have it change chords and it does the same thing. Same chord progression, just more intense plus. But then I but then I add that final chord in there as well just to kind of change it up for the drop and then leading into the chorus. So now let's check out this other sound. It's essentially a four note sequence. And you can hear that it's muffled sounding because I have the low pass filter that comes in. But then the final four for the 16 steps, it changes. That just continues on for each pattern. It just continues to build. But what helps provide even more dynamics is adding a filter. And so what I do is I go to the filter, hold down right, and as it's playing, I turn that left knob to bring the filter up. So I turn on filter from the effects, and I'd play it, and then I'd twist it to the left, slowly bringing it in more and more and more. And it helps create a more dynamic Build that's more dramatic and speaking of filters I also did that to the chords but I didn't do a low pass filter I instead did a high pass filter and I brought it up slowly across all of the patterns in similar fashion holding down right and turning that left knob now let's take a look at the drums so first off we've got a good kick and crash to bring in the build and then we also have that reverse symbol and that's what I did for those first patterns. And then for the second two patterns, it has the clap going on with the high pass filter slowly cutting it out as well. But then there's also that second set of drums to help kind of add even more dynamics. So let me open those up for you guys. We can hear that every single pattern is being used and there's accented notes. Not only is the pitch changing, you can hear it right there between those two notes, the difference in volume. And that helps add accented drums to kind of bring in a little more feel to it. And so what you do is find the drum that you want to have the accent happen on. And then so you would click it and you would adjust it in performance mode, adjust the volume and sequence it in. And then you would take that same drum and turn down the volume instead, and then you would fill in the rest of the notes that are available to you, and then you would have the accented feel to the drums. And those accents help make it feel like it's a real drum. And you can hear that I'm changing the pitch as well. Same thing, hold down right, but this time change to tone, and then turn that knob to the right to bring the pitch up over the sequences themselves. So let's check out that final one. You can hear I've got those triggers going on in those final four. And so for that final one, the double hit, we got the snare to a kick, and then two snare hits after that. Except the second snare hit is also triggered twice. And that kick snare combo kind of lets us know what drop is about to happen. And that drop sounds like this. I 
I think without a doubt this is one of my favorite melodies I've ever written and the vocal sound uh, is just a sound I made a massive as I explained earlier I threw a filter on it with more of like a formant tone and you can see how we have it laid out the first two notes of each pattern are on the one and two of the beat and the others are on the off beats kind of keeping this fun bouncy rhythm at the end of two of the patterns we also have a little arpeggio that takes place now let's take a look at the drums and kind of see here how many hi-hats I really have going on this section and a lot of triggers as well we got two four trigger sections right before that snare hit you can hear that and then the second half of each pattern consists of two triggers per hi-hat and you can hear that the snare's pitched up a little bit that kind of helps lend to that future bass sound as to a more dubstep snare now let's check out the bass line for the chorus So you can hear that the bass is following the kicks, but we also have what kind of sound like octave jumps. I'm not doing full octave jumps all the time. Sometimes they're an octave jump and sometimes I'm just jumping up a fifth. Busy bass lines like this really help provide energy to the song, especially if it's gonna be in the chorus. You can see here, I have it jump up and then come back down at the end. When you got a bass that's hopping around like that, it is hard not to dance. It's got so much fun going on. I just love a really busy bass line. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Now that you've learned about the bass line, let's go to like the wubby chords, I guess, or future bass chords. So you can see on the one and the three, it's just getting triggered one time a piece. And then on the nine and 11, it's also getting triggered for the next chord, and then that does the same thing on the next pattern as well, except the ending of that one is a little special. So let's check that out. So I got the normal wub into that. It's just a little snippet of the chord, and I actually have it being triggered several times. Here, there's the, there it is, perfect. You can see that it's only hitting three times, but it's being re-triggered so many times that it creates this cool glitch sound. So re-triggering chords can really lend to keeping your chorus fresh, changing things up, and keeping the ear interested. Let's take a look at the next section. So let's look at the just the melody is the only thing that changes here. And it's really nothing special. Once again, it's just on the 5 and 7, and then the 13 and the 15 is really all it does. But you can see that we also have just a chorus that's more of an outro without any melody. Just kind of lets the chords shine nicely and the drums and the bass really stand out as it transitions back into the intro. So let's hear that sounds the first time around when I go just from that original synth lead. Ooh. Yeah, that is smooth. You could have this looping all day if you wanted. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm also going to provide the data dump for the samples in the description. See you guys. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.